Hi there and welcome to the program where we share testimonies of God using people to do great things in terms of His heart for cities, for nations. And today to tell us of something that happened in Africa, we've got one of our campus pastors of Dr. Dayo Ken Moale with us. Ken, welcome. It's great to have you on the program. Um, before we go into the great things that has happened recently, maybe just tell us something about who Ken is. So, Kenneth Mwale, I am um, the campus pastor for Dr. Deo Inner City. I'm married to a gorgeous lady called uh, Rebecca Mwale. And uh, we have two kids, Jethro and uh, Jemima. We've been married for close to 15 years now. Oh, wonderful. Now, Ken, you've not always lived in South Africa. Just tell us something of where you're originally from. I, I actually originally come from Zambia. I came to South Africa in 1999 as a student. Uh, after about two years, two, three years, I went back to Zambia and came back to South Africa, planted a church in Centurion, uh, pastored it for five years, and then handed it over to the leadership of that uh, denomination, and then went into business for six years. And it was those, those uh, six years that I started be, uh, uh, being part of the Doxadeo family and uh, as a partner at the East Campus. And then about three years ago, I became a pastor at one of uh, the Doxa Day. Mm. And it's been an exciting journey ever since, eh? I think it's been one of the best years of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Folk. yeah. Um, Ken, now, part of the Doxa DNA is to see God use us, um, the church, the people that is the church, uh, to, to really have an impact, that our lives are not measured just by the significance we achieve on our own, but how we together, as the body of Christ, have an impact uh, in our communities, in our cities. Uh, but we've seen God do something remarkable in Zambia. Now, do you just want to tell us uh, what happened there and what led up to uh, the, the conference that you had recently? So, uh, it was um, Yaku, Yaku Skita, who started the conversation together with Anton, Anton Fenta, to see the possibilities of us doing a City Changes Movement uh, conference in Zambia. That's about, I think, about two years ago. And uh, about uh, a year into that conversation, we started the processes. And uh, last, last month, we were able to, to have that conference in Lusaka. We, we actually just planned to have 50 people, uh, pastors and business people in a room, and uh, have a dialogue about how we can uh, change Lusaka mm. for the better, yeah. Mm. And uh, for sure, God honored that, and uh, we had 50 uh, people come, and uh, the Zambian ambassador to South Africa as well oh, flew in to come and be part of that uh, conversation, yeah. Okay, and these people that you invited, you're saying they're all pastors or leaders in the community and business, was it easy to get people together? Is this something they used to, to congregate as leaders of the city together? I think people are used to conferences. Mm. They are used to go into conferences, but this was not a conference per se. Okay. It, was a, it was a dialogue where we brought people in the room, discuss possibilities of how the church and business uh, can work with the community and can work with the government mm. to make sure that um, the church is also part of the conversation yeah. of bringing change, positive change to the city. Yeah. So what we did is that we invited pastors and uh, business people, and um, obviously we also invited the Zambian uh, Minister of Guidance and Religious Affairs, okay. who was supposed to be in the meeting, but then that same weekend, one of the ministers died, and all the dignitaries had to go to a funeral so mm -hmm. she couldn't come. Okay. So it wasn't that easy to bring people in the room uh, together, but uh, I think what worked for us is that we had very strategic people mm -hmm. that we had sent invitations to so that the same people can bring other people to, to the meeting, and uh, that's how we were able to have the 50 people in the room. But I'm curious, Ken, <clears throat> you are from there. Yes. What, what happened in your heart leading up to the event? I mean, did, did you have all the faith necessary to believe the people were there? Were you slightly concerned about the way that people will receive the invitation? To, to, be, to be honest with you, I was a little bit concerned 
because I, I didn't want to disappoint my friends. Of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, as, uh, we had Alan, mm. Alan Platt and uh, Anton and uh, Jean Simons. Mm. And then um, we also had Miller come. Mm. So when we, we went there, for sure I didn't want to have all these guys come to Lusaka and have three yeah. people in the room. You want your countrymen to be there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so it was good yeah. to see that uh, for sure we had 50 people come to the meeting as we had planned. Mm. And it, it is not very common that you have all the people that you have planned for come to a meeting. True, true. Yeah, so, so it was, was a significant event for these people to actually come. Um, just by what I hear, just for them to all accept the invitation and be there, it's already miracle number one. Mm. But tell us maybe some of the things that happened during that time. What were the, were the, the comments being made by the people that attended? What, what was the outcome, the fruit of what you've seen? Is it what you anticipated to happen? Or, you know, tell us I, something of the moments that you actually moment. experienced. Yes. I, I think uh, one of the th significant things that happened was that uh, when we went into Lusaka, most people ex uh, expect that during a conference, you know, you're just going to excite them. After you excite them, then you leave. Mm -hmm. But I think the message that was uh, uh, preached or the message that was discussed was um, that it's not just one of those conferences where you go to and then afterwards you leave and uh, it ends there. This has to be followed up with actual practical steps on how we can adopt uh, common goals as a church in Lusaka mm. to make sure that we, we make a significant change in the lives of the people in Lusaka. And um, some of the comments that I have been getting from people that uh, attended the conference is that it was a very uh, different conference per se, and uh, the message as well was different from what most of the guys that attended were used to. Mm. And um, I think at a certain point, I really felt compassion for Lusaka. Mm. Yeah, because I have seen what God has done through the ministry of Dr. Deo here in South Africa. And uh, somehow in my heart, I just felt like if those things could happen in Lusaka, we could make a big, big difference mm. in the city of Lusaka and uh, some of the cities as well of, uh, of Zambia. Mm. Yeah. Now, can I... And I think everybody knows that there's power and unity. So what is your prayer for Lusaka? If you, you've seen these people come together and uh, we've heard on this side of South Africa, we've heard the testimonies. Uh, people saying, you know, there was a, a real moving of the hearts of people, excited about what God wants to do through the unity of leaders, really taking ownership for Lusaka. Yes. So that ignited something. You said a process, not just an event. Yeah. What is... What is the heart uh, behind this whole movement? What, what, what is it that you and the rest of the family mm. in Doxida wants to pray for for Lusaka to now happen as a result of this? I, I think uh, the thing that I would want to see uh, come out of this is that Alan, when he was talking to, to the pastors, uh, he mentioned about three things that um, need to be done. We have to identify the pain of the city. Mm. We also have to identify the brokenness of the city, but we also have to look at uh, the lostness of the city. Now, when we look at those three things, the church in Lusaka need to adopt goals in these three areas. But I think one of the things that was good uh, for me to hear something that I think uh, the City Changer Movement is doing well is that Churches don't have to per se unite around doing things together, but they have to unite having common goals. So I have just <clears throat> sent out um, an email to the leadership of the City Changer Movement to see if we can start now the process of uh, going back to Lusaka to get people again in the room so that we can do a strategic process where we can now actually identify the pain of the city, identify the brokenness of the city, and identify the lostness of the city mm. so that we can now have goals, a goal or two goals in each one of these three 
areas that churches in Osaka can can adopt mm. and they can do together. So the good thing about that is that um, even a small church, which is not that big, can be part of something big. Mm. Because what happens is that uh, if, say, for example, they adopt in Lusaka an area of pain where the whole church that comes together uh, say we want to reduce the orphans Mm. Uh, suffering in the city of Lusaka. So a big church can take 100 orphans. A small church can take three orphans. But when you look at uh, what is happening, mm. it's not that this church is doing this and this church is doing that. Mm. But what we would say is that the church in Lusaka has taken over the the orphans, mm. uh, the orphan problem in the South. Regardless of the numbers. Regardless of the number. The of, total effect. Hey, exactly. Because the now the church is not just working together uh, by doing a project together, but is working together by having a common goal. Mm. So when we are talking about the goal, is we are talking about the goal that the church in the city is having, not just uh, what they're doing together. Different ministries on their yeah. own. Hey. Yeah. Ken, I think this is obviously something we trust God to uh, really expand, to, uh, to see the same effect that it has on other cities, especially in Swanee as well, in Pretoria. Um, and it's so exciting to hear what God is doing. And I pray that God will really continue to use you and the leadership involved there. Um, and may we have another interview not too far from now, where we have more testimonies about what God is doing in Osaka. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for obeying the call of God in your life. Um, we appreciate your time. Thanks, Ken. Thank you very much, Tops. I really appreciate this. Thank you.